introduce the session, really. The great speakers are here at the table. So I'm going to talk a little bit about CNU Latino and what it's about and why. But the CNU Latino logo is up on the screen. It's kind of a little bit, uh, some people recognize what it is, most people do not. But the map you see on the screen shows the extent that Latin America once occupied North America. It went all the way up to Wyoming. Okay? That was all Latin America. A lot of you were born in Latin America and don't know it. It's the CNU Latino logo because it emphasizes how far and deep the roots and influences of Latin America extended into the present-day USA. And that's long before mass migration distributed these influences throughout all 50 states. And one of the things that people don't realize is how much of what we call quintessentially American in the sense of Anglo-American is actually Latin American. For example, the all-American cowboy. His hat. His hat evolved from the sombreros worn by the Mexican vaqueros. They wore white rim sombreros because of the sun, protecting the sun as they worked the cows. The English saddle is not the saddle that the cowboys ride. The cowboys ride on the Spanish saddle with a Mexican horn. And that Mexican horn is to tie the lasso on you know, roping cattle. And the lasso itself is a Spanish word. Write it with a Z. It means rope in Spanish. So everything that you see about this guy, everything, <laughs> from, his, from his boots, through his chaps, through his buckle, through his hat, is cultural appropriation from Latin America. <laughs> everything except one thing. And that's his music, movie music, and the beginnings of the uh, <laughs> the beginnings of country western. That came from where? Italy. 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 <laughs> Very good. Thank you. The music of Ennio Morricone, right? Yes. The Italian spaghetti western is where all the country western music got its start. So please, everything. Even so much of the new urbanism relates to Latino roots too. Christopher Alexander. A lot of his ideas were profoundly influenced by his time in Peru, where he developed an appreciation of the importance of social planning, what we now call the charrette, because he didn't know these folks. He had to find out who they were. And he did this by talking to them. Voila. And he became, realized how important this was in his practice. And now we all do it. The hybridization of Mesoamerican city planning with the Spanish gridiron the Spanish, the Carta de las Indias, the Spanish grid, right, underlies the street grids of so many cities all over the United States. From San Antonio, Santa Fe, Los Angeles, St. Louis, San Diego, San Jose, San Francisco, El Paso, St. Augustine, the oldest city in the USA, and Memphis! Memphis! Founded by Hernando de Soto in 1541. And you thought New Orleans, right? You thought New Orleans was the handiwork of the French, right? But it's not. The architecture of the French Quarter was designed and built by the Spanish. France gave up control of Louisiana to Spain in 1763. Over the next 40 years, the Spanish built the city. Everything, the tiled roofs, the uh, tropical colors, uh, the ironwork, it's all of Iberian origin and inspiration. So is the Cabildo, the big famous building in the center of it, and so is the running of the bulls. Where do you think that comes from? And do you know what the biggest holiday is in Latin America? It is not um, Christmas, it's not uh, Easter, it's Carnaval. Carnaval is Mardi Gras. We celebrate the devil. We take him out of the ground for one week. And that's the most fun time. People from Buenos Aires that will live in the province, that come from the provinces to Buenos Aires, where I grew, it was a real problem because all the maids and everything disappeared. They went back home for the week. So, we can attribute the best of U.S. urbanism to this mestizaje, or this hybridization of the Mesoamerican and Spanish cultures, along with beloved elements like our public squares, courtyards, our city grids, that's where they come from, all of them. So, 
precisely because of the hybrid nature of Latinos. Black, brown, blonde, and the diversity of the native cultures that feed our identity, because we identify with them. We spent the first three meetings of CNU Latino arguing about what to call our group. What do we call our organization? We couldn't agree. Well, we had to decide what box to put ourselves in. Latino, Hispanic, or Latinx. Right? There were some strong opinions. There were some minor arguments. In the end, everyone, including the ladies, liked Latino best. Okay? But then the big question came up. What the heck is a Latino? What's a Latino? <laughs> Well, this is very difficult for us because none of us identifies with being Latino, Hispanic, or Latinx. When you hop in an Uber, the driver looks Hispanic, and you ask that terrifying question, what are you? He doesn't ever say, oh, I'm Latino. No. He says, Mexican, so in Mexico. I'm Colombian, so I'm Colombiano. I am uh, uh, New Yorican. I'm Chicano. I'm Mexicano, I'm all kinds of things but Latino. I'm an Argentino, that's where I was born, that's how I identify. So, we see ourselves embodying a lot of different cultures, and we like the differences. Andres will speak to that shortly. Ultimately, we realize that Latinos were not a conventional ethnicity or distinct race, but an alliance of immigrant cultures. We don't get along as well in South America as we do in North America. James will discuss how this mestizaje of Latinos has influenced um, the cities that we live in today and how it continues to influence the cities that we live in today. So why is CNU Latino versus a CNU AIA or a CNU, or, or I mean a Latino AIA or planning or whatever? To an extent, we're trying to figure that out ourselves. And that's why we meet, to try and what are we going to do? Uh, inspired by the CNU Congressional Black Caucus and the good work of, of um, Brzezinski Boyce, uh, we decided to forge an alliance, essentially, of immigrant <coughs> cultures within the new urbanism and kind of claim a unified voice in the dialogue on how our communities uh, should be planned, how they should evolve, how they should work. Latinos are the majority already in California and in Texas. A majority, not the biggest minority, the majority of the people. We stand to be 30% of the population of the United States very soon. So it seemed like an excellent time to step up and have a voice in CNU as to the planning of our future communities. And why are we very attuned to the new urbanism. We're naturally predisposed to urbanism. 82% of us live in urban areas. We like pavement. We don't mind crowds. For us, density is delightful. No issues. We're hardworking people with migrant souls eager to build a strong future here in the USA. But we're not only hard-working hands that will do the work that nobody else will do. We have minds. <laughs> and many of us are well-educated professional planners, developers, and architects. Melanie will speak about this aspect of immigration in a moment, too. You won't see her story on CNN. She didn't wade across the Rio Grande. She is a professional <coughs> immigrant. And this is part of our story, too. CNU Latino represents an alliance of planners, designers, and developers who've gotten together within this organization with very high-level skills and Latin flair, right? That's important. We're going to design resilient, creative, self-reliant communities because we are no strangers to economic hardship or climate cal calamity. We can deal with it. We can deal with it, and you can learn from us, too just as we learn from you. And Brandon will speak about this, it's his experience as an Anglo-American developer in Mexico, and the influence it's had on him. So, in the end, finally, CNU Latino is a resource for the new urbanism uh, that will shape inclusive, not elite, communities, sustainable because they're socially balanced, rich and poor, intellectual, and illiterate. Where a Usonian mestizaje can occur, we're all about
about reconciling differences, not segregating or eliminating them. And this has always been an urbanist ideal. Mixed use and mixed income. So we hope to add mixed cultures, north and south. With that, I turn it over. The ever informative James Rojas. Thank you. Thank you.